Hello, my name is Rochelle Johnson. I am a member of the National Center for Learning Disabilities Young Adult Leadership Council, as well as being disabled myself, a disability activist, and a current PhD student at Florida State University. I'm excited to be joined today by State Representative Michelle du Udall from Arizona. Um, a Representative Udall, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. So at this time, many disabled students across the country are experiencing barriers to receiving accommodations in higher education settings. Many universities require diagnosis be from within the last three to five years and don't take IEPs or 504 plans as proof of enough of disability. I personally have experience with this. When I started my PhD, I was at risk of being denied accommodations because my diagnosis was over six years old even though I had been on disability accommodations academically since the age of seven. I was lucky enough that because I had extensive additional documentation, I was granted accommodations, but I very well could not have been. And, this is, and many disabled students are left without needed accommodations in higher education. Representative Udall has introduced a house bill in Arizona that would change this for disabled students in higher education. So we're here to talk with her about that today. So your representative Udall, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure, I'm Michelle Udall. I'm a high school math teacher. Uh, I have four children. I live in Mesa, Arizona, um, and I chair the education committee. So most of the policy work I do is uh, deals with education policy. Um, and I, of my children, none of my children are quite neurotypical. So I have a daughter with Tourette's, a son with autism and ADHD, um, actually two sons with autism and HD, although different places on the spectrum, um, and then a daughter with ADHD as well. So um, they've all had struggles in school. And um, my second, my one with the most severe disabilities, um, just started college at the beginning of last semester and ran into a lot of troubles. Things like not finding out where to find assignments or turn them in until midway through the semester things that should have been fixed early on through accommodations and weren't. And so um, when somebody I know that has done a lot of disability work in the state, her name is Carla um, Phillips, I'm, I'm gonna pronounce her wrong, last name wrong, Kravikas, um, told me about the RISE Act, told me about what they were working on nationally. Um, and I asked her, well, can't we do that already? Couldn't universities do that already? And she said, well, they could, but they just don't. And I said, well, couldn't we require it at the state level? And she said, yeah, there's no reason we couldn't. And so that's how we ended up with the bill. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing some of that. Um, that answers part of my first question, but if you have anything to add, I wanted to ask you to describe the House Bill 231 and why you chose to introduce it and what type of issues you were seeking to address. You've answered some of this already, but if there's anything you'd like to add. So it started out from the RISE Act and we used pretty much the exact language from the RISE Act initially. Um, and then as we've had discussions with community colleges and universities about how to clarify the language as well as with parents um, and students with special needs, we've talked about how do we clarify the language, make it uh, even better so that we have that access to students. Uh, for students and that we um, do the best we can on it. But that is where it came from was, was saying the federal government takes too long to do anything. Uh, why would we wait for them? Let's just do it in Arizona. Okay, yeah. So um, how, what, um, assuming that this bill gets passed, how would this change the process for college students in Arizona when they seek accommodations? So this would allow students to bring an IEP or a 504 plan to their, um, to their community college or university, and that would qualify them for accommodations, or it would it would tell them they don't have to do a different evaluation. So for example, um, I just got an email, actually just got this today from somebody that said that when her daughter went to college, she had to pay for her to get an adult normed evaluation in order for her to receive accommodations when she already had a 504 in place. And it sounds like you had a similar situation where they said, oh, you're gonna have to go get this costly extra evaluation. Um, you had already had it done, so you were okay, but for a lot of students, that's a roadblock. And especially as they transition into adulthood where they're supposed to be more independent and parents don't have access to as much oversight of their education, if you will, um, 
it becomes harder for them to ask for that help. And so this the goal is to smooth that that glide so that if they have a disability that has been documented in the past through IEP or 504 plan, that the college will acknowledge that they have that need. Yeah, that's great. There are many students who, even with lifelong disabilities, currently are being told you have to get reevaluated because mm -hmm. your diagnosis might have gone away in five years. It's being not told like to autism or Down syndrome or these things go away. I mean, no. they are lifelong issues. You don't no. grow out of them. Yes, exactly. So we want to make sure that that's how accommodations are affected. So my next question is, what has been the response from the disabled community in Arizona to this bill? And how, has, how is the passing of this bill a move towards equity? Um, I don't, you know, there, there's there been a lot of support uh, among the disability community. I don't know if it's super widely known at this point what we're doing on it. Uh, a lot of times these things happen in the background and people don't find out about them until later. Um, so there hasn't been a huge uh, outpouring of either support for or against. Um, there has been a lot of cooperation with the colleges on getting this to be something that they can do. Um, because they're seeing problems with their own processes too. And so that's been, I think, really good for them to examine their own processes um, and to come to the table. Awesome. Um, and then what has the process been like in getting this bill passed? And how can advocates in other states get their own legislature, legislators to follow your lead in introducing a bill like that in their own states? I hope as many states as possible will do this, will follow this lead. Um, it turns out there's not really anyone that comes out against it. Um, even the colleges, the ones that you would think would be the least supportive have really been pretty supportive along the way, have not pushed back on it, um, have helped us refine language to make sure that, that things don't get out of control. Um, but they really have been reasonable on this issue. Um, so I think that there's a lot less pushback than you would expect um, on any bill. Uh, so that would be the big thing would be first, just go ahead and drop the bill. Um, what was interesting about this one is we got it all the way through the house and the community colleges had come to us and asked for a couple changes in language and we, we had worked through some things with them, but the universities didn't even engage until it moved over to the Senate. So they didn't even engage until after it had already passed nearly unanimously off the house floor. And so that was kind of interesting. Um, but so I would say first, go ahead and drop the bill and then engage with your stakeholders, um, both the disability community and the colleges um, to make sure that it's something that's workable for both. Okay, that's good advice as we try to push this in other states. So as you know, a similar bill to um, House Bill 2031 called the RISE Act has been introduced in Congress for the last four Congresses, including the present one. And this bill has not passed. So we are excited to see this progress in your state. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much for joining me and being a supporter of the disabled community. I hope that in the near future, we see other states and the federal government follow your lead in introducing similar bills. I hope so too. I mean, the disabled community has a lot to offer. And the more they get this high, these higher education opportunities, the more they're going to be able to be self-sustaining and, and become independent adults that they want to be. Um, and so the more we can do to help them along this path, the better off we are as, this, as a society. Yes, I could not agree more as a disabled um, individual in our society. I am definitely excited to see this progress. Before we end today, is there anything else you would like to share? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, just keep working on what you're doing. I know you guys have been working at the federal level to get this done, and I think that work needs to continue. But a lot of times when you can get it started in a bunch of states first, it then becomes federal policy as they see that it's not the end of the world. It's not, you know, you kind of put to rest some of the fears of what might happen when you actually see it working. And so um, I'm excited to see it move forward. Yes, we are excited too. So thank you so much for joining me today and being a supporter of the disabled community. We're excited to see this progress. Thank you for having me.